So what we are in the process of is reviewing for the unit test, which is on Friday. Now, I would strongly suggest keeping these lists of formulas close by and working with them regularly. Like I said, some of you did really good jobs in these retakes and quizzes. Some people just don't know their formulas. And like I've said, we're, we're trying to do everything I can to get you to learn these formulas. For some of you, this is like the first time you've even written them down. Ever. Yes, because of two different quizzes. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot that needs to be done here as far as people being prepared. We're going to have formulas. We're going to keep having formulas. We're going to have a lot of formulas, and you need to maybe start keeping a, a list of them somewhere, a notebook of them somewhere, something, somehow so you can learn these formulas and then practice using them. The other big issue that, that some people are having, not everybody in here, and probably this class least of any of them, but is people not doing their homework so they don't practice using the formula. So when it comes time to do it on the test, they make mistakes. Even if they know the formula, they aren't practiced in using it, you know, it doesn't work very well that way. That's what the homework is for. I mean, Let's face it, you know, today we had pretty decent homework completion. I'd say about three quarters. A lot of days are around half or less. And grades have just been dropping like crazy. I know spring break is coming in two more days. We have a big test between now and then. And you have to have your A game on. You can't start phoning it in. When we get back, the weather is going to be super nice outside. That's the hardest time of the year to keep going because everything's nice and you, and you don't want to have to work so hard, but a lot of you have dug yourself such holes this first, you know, two, three weeks of thir fourth quarter, you're going to have to work your tail off all through May just to get it up to a passing grade again, some of you. So seriously, let's get some stuff together. Just some quick reviewing stuff. We're going to go over this. We're going to spend as much time. We're going to go over the smart board notes. Then we'll go over the quizzes as much as possible, but you can certainly do those on your own as well. Go over your errors on that, learn from those. Um, we can discuss the homework as well. Any questions on that? Let's just start with some of the notes. How many common tangents are there when I have two circles like this? Four common tangents. I mean, we could kind of draw them in, okay? These are gonna be very approximate, um, but you're gonna get the idea because they aren't perfectly tangent. But you get the idea, okay? Yeah, I mean, come on, it's not that bad. That one's pretty good now. Yeah, that one's pretty good. That's not bad. Okay. So this one is off. There. All right. Um, so there's my four common tangents. What? Okay. Um. So there are four common tangents. What if I bring the two circles, so instead of being like this, now I'm seeing I drew them all, now I'm gonna get rid of all. This works. It's actually probably a little bit faster. What if the two circles like that, now how many common tangents? One, two, three. Three, because I got the one that runs right down where point of tangency. How about now? How about now? about now? Nine. What we call the two circles and one's perfectly centered in the other one? <laughs> a donut <laughs> with sprinkles. It's got multicolored sprinkles. There. That's what it is. It's a donut. No. Concentric circle. Okay. It's a donut. If you put a donut on your test, it's always right. 
Giving me a donut when you turn in your test is always right. Doesn't really get you much, but goodwill, perhaps, maybe when I'm grading it, I won't feel quite so angry. Um, if you had to grade the quizzes I had to grade yesterday, you'd feel angry, too. Some people did. No, but I'm about to rip some other people's hair out. I don't abuse myself. I abuse others. Much, much it makes me feel better. Um, identify a chord in this picture. Any one chord. Okay, B, P would not be a chord. A, E, A, what A, E? A, E is not a point. Segment A, E. How about a tangent line? Line. Line. DC. How about a radius? PB. What PB? Line, line. No. Yeah. Okay. How about a secant? Line A. Line A. How about a diameter? How about the center of a circle? Just P. We don't need a symbol or anything for it, okay? So, all right, you're giggling, but the segment line thing makes a difference. What? Because we said P. Is that why you're laughing? Because we said P. Wait, wait until you take stats and we get to do P tests. I'm serious. Yes. No, a segment has two endpoints. The line is infinite. <laughs> Chapter one. Okay. Segment has endpoints. Begins here, ends here. Line is infinite. Okay. Here's a circle of tangent BC. So this is a tangent line. BC is tangent. Find the value of X. Okay. The Pythagorean theorem will help because a tangent is has a right angle tangency to the radius, right? The radius and the tangent together form a right angle. So, how would I set up this Pythagorean theorem? Oh, not quite as easy as what we've gotten used to with our Pythagorean theorem. Now, in the homework last night, a lot of you made mistakes with this. You distributed the exponent over the sum instead of foiling. This is x squared plus 576. But I have to foil that out. That's x squared plus 36x uh, plus 18 times 18 is 324, I think. Yes. Somebody check that on me. 324. Okay. Now, it looks like it's going to be tough, but it's not because the x squared do cancel out. So then it's just track 324 from each side. So that gives me 252 equals 36x divided by 36. And 252 divided by 36, 7. Okay, so the radius is 7, that's 7, and that's going to be 25 then, isn't it? Okay, so there we are. That's all there is to it. But it does require us to know our algebra, to remember that when I have a binomial squared, I actually have to FOIL that. So x squared plus 18x plus 18x plus 324, okay? It is not just x squared plus 324. If you do just distributing the exponent, it does not work. And we've demonstrated as to why that doesn't work 
with numbers, it's very easy to see. If I take 7 plus 4 squared, order of operations says parentheses, then exponents, right? Parentheses, so that's 11 squared. That has to be 121. But if I distribute the exponent, that's 7 squared plus 4 squared is 49 plus 16. 49 plus 16 is 65. 65 is not the same as 121, is it? I cannot just distribute the exponent over a sum. It just doesn't work. So be careful about that. It's easy to see here why it doesn't work. It's not so easy to see here, but, the same, but it's the same thing. So we have to follow our rules of mathematics. We don't have to, but if we want to pass, we do. Okay? So watch that. Be careful. Uh, find the value of x. There, there are going to be all these theorems in this test for both segments and angles, and that's going to be the real trick now is remembering all these other formulas too. But what's going to be true here? They have to be congruent because they're both tangent to the circle, and the tan common tangents are congruent to the point of, from point of intersection to point of tangency. So 4x squared plus 50 equals 86, so 4x squared equals 36, so x squared is 9, so x is plus or minus 3. It could be negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9, 4 times 9 plus 50 still equals 86. Okay, so we have when we take that square root, we always have to take into account that plus minus. In this case, it does not make a length negative, so we can work with it. So plus or minus 3. This we just got done with. Central angles and arcs. A lot of people mess this up on the quiz. I mean, this was what problem on the I, I3 quiz is problems 4 and 5. Seriously, number four, you didn't have to find all the rest of the arcs. All you had to do was find that one arc is 70 degrees, the same as the angle. That was like a freebie. A lot of people did a lot of work there for no reason. Okay? It's like all I'm asking for is this arc right here. What's it going to be? 63. Okay? Now, we could ask a bunch of other questions, like number five said DEC. So I might do something like, Okay, what if I want to go DEC on this one? To start with, you've got to identify the arc that you're looking for. So, where's my highlighter? Highlighter. There we go. This is a different version of SmartBoard that I'm using. It's a new computer. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. A lot of people did D C E D or C D E instead of D E C. Semicircle 180. All right, you gotta be careful. You gotta look at the picture, see what you're actually drawing. There's everything but that arc up top. Now I do have to find what this angle is going to be. What's that angle going to be? 79. How did you get that? Yep. Added these, all three of these together have to add up to 180. So this one, we take 180 minus the 38 minus 63 leaves me 79. So what would that arc be? Well, 360 minus the 79, right? So that's 281. Is the arc? Okay, I'm not asking for the arc length, I'm asking for the arc measure. We couldn't give an arc length if we don't have a radius. I don't have a radius. So I can't do the arc length. This is just the arc angle. That's all we're asking for. Okay. Sorry. If you uh, zoom there page, there we go. Are these arcs congruent? 
are the two arcs that we have, and it should indicate them, are these two arcs congruent? How many say yes? How many say no? How many say they don't have enough information? What is the requirement to have congruent arcs? They have to have the same measure and be in congruent circles. They both have measure 130, don't they? But are they in congruent circles? No. So the arcs themselves are not congruent. Circles are congruent when they have the same radius. I guess you could say not enough information that, well, we need to know if they're central angles or not. And uh, so, yeah, I'll give, okay, they, they are central angles. You're right, I did. So if you said not enough information, that was your reason why, really and honestly and truly, then you're correct. Well, it's not the edge. You are slightly off center. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, that was just too easy. You can't, you can't. <laughs> I do, but you still failed. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is a rectangle inscribed in a circle. How do I know that? Because this is a right angle. Now, what do you know about opposite angles to inscribe quadrilateral? No. Opposite angles in an inscribed quadrilateral are not congruent. They are supplementary, making that 90, which, by the way, is what got a lot of people in trouble on, say, number six on the I-3. A lot of people put 92 down there. Opposite angles are not congruent. They are supplementary. That would have to be 88. Or same with number 11. On that same quiz, angle F is not 88. It has to be 92. Because opposite angles are supplementary, not congruent. Okay. Um, so once we have that, then we can start finding things. Uh, measure of arc AB. Well, if this is a arc AB right here, if I were to draw this in here, this diagonal, this diagonal has to be a diameter of the circle because this angle is a right angle. So if this is 40, this has to be 140. And again, congruent angle... Congruent segments would make congruent arcs. So once we know that, we can go. But the, one of the key factors we have here, again, is since this is a right angle, that's a right angle, that means that this arc has to be a semicircle. Right? It has to be twice as much. So keep that in mind. In opposite angles, are not in an inscribed quadrilateral, they are supplementary. Like I said, that cost people both on number six and number 11. A lot of people points both places. Find the values of X and Y. All right. This is a diameter. Um, that's a right angle. I'll give you that. Okay. So what do we know about a diameter? When it forms a right angle with a chord, it is, what's true about these two arcs? They have to be congruent. What's true about these two segments? They also have to be congruent. 3x minus 8 has to equal x plus 2, which again, relatively easy but show your work so you don't make silly mistakes. And we can solve that. 
Uh, this is the center of the circle. Uh, the two. Sorry, this should probably be on the chords, not the arcs. If that's true, what must be true? They have to be congruent. Now, this is going to be a little trickier mathematically because I get x squared plus 2 equals 6x minus 3. I can't just combine my x's here because I have an x squared and an x, so what am I going to have to do? Nope. Because I have an x squared and an x, I can't just take the square root either. You have to bring everything to one side of the equation and factor. Okay? So subtract 6x, add 3. I get x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. Now we have to factor that. Factoring problem 3 on the I3 test. A lot of people skipped it altogether. But factoring is still part of what we do. What two numbers multiply to give me 5, add to give me negative 6? Negative 5, so x minus 5, x minus 1 equals 0. So x has to equal 5 or 1. So either number works. In this case, they both work. 25 plus 2 is 27. 30 minus 3 is 27. If it's 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. 6 minus 3 is 3. Both answers actually work this time. There are two solutions. Sometimes one of the answers doesn't work if it gives me negative length. But in this case, they both work. So if we wind up with a situation like that, we have to be comfortable solving a quadratic. All right. Let's look at any questions from the homework from last night. That's just some review. We're going to be doing more. I have a review worksheet for you today. But let's just see. Let's just look at the homework and see if there are any questions. We're out of here. What? Oh, two. Okay, good. It's seven thirteen and nine fourteen. I believe are our two pages. Correct. So let's start on the 713. Um, these are factoring problems. We did what? 10 through 10 through 16. 10 was just for answers. X plus 2, X plus 4. 11, Y minus 3, Y plus 2. 12, A plus 8, A minus 8. 13, Z minus 4, Z minus 4. 14, 3S minus 1, S plus 1. 15, 5B minus 1, B minus 3. Uh, 16, 2X squared. Oh, this is a tougher one. Did we do 16? Yeah. There's 2X squared minus 7, 2X squared plus 7. I won't give you something that hard. And 17, 5R minus 9, 5R plus 9. Any of those you want to go over other than I'm not going to worry about 16. Then let's look at 7 or 9, 13, 9, 14. And which ones do I have you doing? Okay. Okay. So 1 through 8, any questions there? Be able to identify all the parts? Yes. Okay. How about 9, 10, 11? Just like we did in the homework just now, yes. 11. What has to be true about those two segments? Equals. So 2x plus 7 equals 3x minus 5. That's all. Okay. Uh, then 15 it was? Okay. 15 was minor in 30 degrees. 16 is minor in 150. 17 is minor in 105. 18 is two major in 225. 19 is minor in 105. 20 is a semicircle in 180. 21 was 310, and 22 is 25. Oh. I did? Really? Oh, I changed what I did before. 25 was 115. 8B. 
and 29. Or 25 through 29? Okay. 25 with 115, 29 with uh, theorem 10 3 congruent. Uh, A, arc AB is congruent to arc ED. Any questions on that stuff? Let me give you the worksheet of the day. By the way, I did make sure when I made the copies, I hope it worked out. The answer should be on the last page. Yes, they are. So the answers are part of this review packet. Tomorrow we'll spend time going over the review packet, continuing to review formulas, equations. There's a lot to talk about here. You need to spend some serious time looking at this packet and going over it. We'll spend time tomorrow going over it. Quizzes, the test on Friday. This is due tomorrow. Just a reminder also that any unit H retakes that you want to do have to be done by tomorrow or by Friday. Okay? Any unit H stuff that you want retakes on, all unit H retakes are due by Friday. Is that sweet finish with I? Yeah, just turn this right, like I, whichever one you want to take, I3 or I4, and your name on it. And then turn it.